What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, it is 121 days, 3 hours, 57 minutes away from kickoff of the 2023 season. We are less than a two days away from the schedule release. We know that the Eagles at the moment have the hardest schedule if we go by comparison to last year we've heard that maybe just maybe the eagles in kansas city are playing on week number two in kansas city the super bowl rematch and we'll find out everything else come thursday there's a couple of things that are going on. You know, I've been privy or been fortunate enough from here in my basement to be able to do some really cool things and talk to some really cool people. One of those persons was Terrence Parsons. About two years ago, um, Micah Parsons, after Micah Parsons' rookie year. And I started thinking back because it was a great interview talking to get a little bit of background on Micah. But an interesting thing that happened during that interview was Terrence and I were talking about Micah Parsons playing edge and ultimately where he should play and how his father felt about it. So I want to actually play this back for you because it is, you know, maybe, maybe just maybe that this conversation that we had is a conversation that Micah had with his father about the same situation because we know Micah Parsons basically is going full-time edge rusher here that he's bulking up. Let's listen to this bit here because this is actually very, very telling. Like I told people in high school, I said, the class of 2018, that's going to be the best class of college football in the last 25 years. And if you look at it, if you look at last year's draft, I believe 80% of that first round we're all 2018 kids. Yeah, definitely could be. You know, I, I don't know Micah personally or anything like that, but from what I've seen on him, uh, the greatest compliment I can make about him is is having played football with Charles Haley at JMU. He is the player the Dallas Cowboys have been waiting on. Now, he's not Charles Haley with the crazy, because like I, I, I can tell you some stories about Charles, but I'm not going to go into it. But when I, I look at him, and I like to call him a dog, Somebody that's in there, that's in your face, that ends up rallying and getting people behind. To me, the Dallas Cowboys have been missing that guy that can really rally the troops and is out there that is a game changer. Um, when I see him play on the field, I felt like this season, we haven't seen somebody playing like that since Lawrence Taylor. Um, your thoughts on that? Would you agree with that? Oh. Um, he's a great addition. Um I won't put him in the same um, category as Lawrence Taylor. You know, we only got one year in. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. And, you know, and like you said, I just want to be Michael Parsons, you know. I just want to play my best and bring my best. I want to be a legend. So, you know, he don't – he doesn't get into that. I'm like this guy. I'm like this guy. Mm -hmm. Michael Parsons. I just, I'm, I'm playing football. And he just loves the game. Like – if they told him next year, hey, we need you at safety, mm -hmm. be one of the best safeties in the league. He's going to learn. He's going to ask questions. Like, he just wants to play football. If they say, hey, can you run two fullback plays? Oh, my God, I've been waiting for this. Yeah, come on, let's go. Like, as long as he's on that field, he's excited. You know, I, I'm surprised that somebody hasn't done like a Bo Nose commercial. Remember the Bo Jackson commercial oh, yeah, back in the yeah, day? Yeah, yeah. Because literally seeing him playing, of course, linebacker and then going through and playing defensive end, seeing him back in there, you know, past defenses and all that, it's kind of like, you know, what are, what do you need me to do, coach? You know, I wouldn't be surprised if you ended up having to play a couple of snaps at quarterback and things. Um, does he have a preference? I know he's the kind of guy that, you know, if I'm playing uh, part-time, edge rusher, I'm okay playing middle linebacker, but does he have a preference in playing? Does he like being on the edge more? Does he like being in that middle linebacker? For me, I think he's more effective on that edge. A lot of people will say, you know, he doesn't have the weight and the size, but, you know, Charles is about 250 and about 6'3", 6'4". Um, to me, defensive ends, it's now about speed more so than size. He likes the linebacker position. But I'll tell you, like I tell anybody else, mm -hmm. if you want to maximize him, mm -hmm. 
Let him stay on the edge. I have to agree with that 100%. I mean, from little league to middle school to high school, like, him on the edge is almost like Dion was at corner. Mm-hmm. Just there on one side of the field. Yeah, but you know? And, like I said, when he made that call to me and said, yeah, man, okay. Tank got hurt and moved me to DN. I was excited. <laughs> I'll be honest. I was like, oh, man, I'm not sure. You know, being a rookie, you know, just coming out and having it, it, the, the problem with being a rookie is, you know, you're the big fish in a little pond. Now you go to the pros, everything is faster, and you're now playing against all big fish. And to go from playing middle linebacker, now I got to play edge? And it's like, how you're going to learn all this this quick? To see him make that transition was like, wow. It, it was just amazing to watch. Well, see, this the thing. It really wasn't a transition. You got to understand, he played defensive end mm-hmm. from age 6 to age 18. Mm-hmm. He played DM. Only thing he might not knew was the, really the hand movements, but to come off the edge, the you know the move. He been doing that, mm-hmm. and then learning with the Marcus and them, they really teach him more hand movements and everything. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, and like he said in that one interview, yeah, he had a lot of work today, didn't he? Yeah, because again, when you bring in that speed every play, mm-hmm. that wear them tackles out. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. And see, I think that's what the Cowboys need to do with him. They honestly need to get him on that edge, you know, at least 25, 30 plays a game. So if you think if you, if he gets them going out and he swings back in, they're not moving back in that quick. Mm -mm. And then it came to a point where they had to bring the tight end over or even have the running back help. So now you've got two or three guys worried about one person. That frees up somebody over there. They got to win the one on one back. Yeah. There you go. Well, you know, I've I've been on here for quite a bit, and I know. All right, now <laughs> there's some insight that was two years ago, talking with this father um, about Micah Parsons. Um, we actually did it was a th- over a thirty minute interview with him, um, talking with him about Micah Parsons and, and a number of things about him being uh, a cowboy fan and and everything else. I want to end this with looking at Micah Parsons, Jamar Chase, and rookie Deuce Vaughn. This just came out about an hour ago. This was Micah Parsons um, doing uh, some work with those two guys. And you look at the speed that Micah Parsons has. Oh, my God. Watch this. Micah is in the middle. Look at this. Yeah. One more here. Right. <laughs> Unbelievable. Like we were saying in the interview, he's a gym rat. He don't care where he's playing. He just wants to play football. And, man, now that we got Max, Moxie, Mozzie Smith, oh, my Lord, you're going to see some incredible things. The first two years was just getting to know everybody. This year, it's MVP. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate y'all. Peace.